There's this stupid misconception that if everything is overpowered, then nothing is overpowered. This is incredibly wrong because of how hierarchies work, and especially how hierarchies work in video games. Really, everything we do is categorized, and something always ends up on top. If you collected Hot Wheel cars, you probably have a favorite. If you hang out with four other people, one of you is probably the smart one, one of you is the popular one, one of you is the funny one, and you all might be smart and funny and popular, but it will be to varying degrees, even within that more repetitive structure. Hierarchies form all of the time. They, they just, they just do. There are things you like more than other things. There are people that are funnier than other people. Doesn't mean these things can't change or be rearranged and we're not permanently set to suffer if we're at the bottom of one of these hierarchies. That's, that's an oppressive narrative and we're not gonna get into that. But the thing is, when it comes to video games, the idea that if everything's really, really powerful, every gun's really, really powerful, then it's all, you know, nothing can be overpowered, and that's wrong. Even in games where I'd consider every primary weapon to be really good, there are still primary weapons that myself and others widely prefer, by like a huge margin. Take for instance the gameplay running in the background here, this is Modern Warfare 3. There are lots of low recoil, fast time to kill assault rifles in Modern Warfare 3, but yet the ACR is probably the most used. I would say every assault rifle you use in Modern Warfare 3 kills very quickly and is far too versatile and they probably all could use a pretty blanket nerf. You might be thinking, or just buff everything else. <sighs> Not always. Look, the thing is, some people seem to think that if, again, everything is really, really powerful, then nothing will be out of balance. Not true. Let's say every assault rifle in a video game is a three-shot kill. Well, then you might use the gun that has the least recoil. Well, what about the gun with the faster reload time? Well, what about the gun with the faster draw time? What about the gun that has the better iron sights? Something will always float to the top. It is unavoidable. Anytime you have multiple of a thing, it forms a proverbial pyramid and something will arise to the top, whether in your preference and your perception, or just in the nature of how it's used by your peers. Even though Bungie in the Halo games tried really hard to make sure each individual gun had its own use, purpose, and value to it, there were still guns that were better to use than others and some guns that felt like they were completely, completely useless. A big example is Modern Warfare 2. Everybody uses Modern Warfare 2 as the stupid example. If everything's OP, then nothing's OP. They're fucking trying to Wakanda forever me and I'm like, no! I feel like there's, uh, more- God! Oh! Damn, fucking, uh, random javelin you. double! Random javelin double! <laughs> I just randomly shot it off into the middle of the map. That- That shouldn't have happened. Oh, that shouldn't have happened. Well, a big reason people thought that everything was OP in Modern Warfare 2 was because of the stopping power perk and how it made most guns kill incredibly fast. And even though I wouldn't fault you for using any of the rifles or SMGs or LM, I wouldn't fault you for using any gun in Modern Warfare, maybe except for the w WA-2000 semi-auto sniper, but either way, I wouldn't really fault you for using anything on offer, but there were still guns that people preferred, whether they had less recoil or a faster reload time. Maybe they held their max damage for an extra couple of meters. If you played a lot of Modern Warfare 2 and you think that, well, just everything was useful, so it was completely balanced, then you're lying to yourself. So to all the people that remember Modern Warfare 2 correctly, write in the comment section below the guns that rose to the top of the proverbial pyramid or hierarchy. If you had a first person shooter where every gun killed in a single shot, then people would gravitate to the gun that kicks the least amount. I mean, a single shot death is pretty much um, an ultimate unifier, it's an equalizer, if you will. Uh, what are you supposed to do when everything kills in one shot? You don't really have to worry about time to kill or controlling recoil, it's just about hitting the first shot. But I guarantee you, people would gravitate to whatever gun has a nice balance of high RPM and low recoil, that way they could put a lot of rounds out accurately and not have to worry too much. As long as one round of the magazine hits you, you're dead. 
Okay, so in this crazy shooter, let's pretend that not only is it a one-shot kill, but every gun has the same amount of recoil, spread, the same amount of rounds in the magazine, so on and such forth, then you'd probably gravitate to whichever one had the best iron sights. Okay, so let's put the same iron sights on every gun in the game. Well, then you're probably going to want to use whichever one takes up the least amount of screen space, so probably a carbine or SMG or something just a little bit smaller than like a big rifle or LMG. So, it has the same stats, and it has a one-shot kill, and it has the same iron sights, but it takes up a little less screen real estate. Okay, so the only you're thinking, well, then how do you achieve true balance? And I mean absolute, 100% true balance, everything is equally viable. You, you would just have to have one gun. Literally, one gun. You know that if there were two guns in Call of Duty that had the exact same stats and iron sights and, and everything, and the same size, but one of them was tan and one of them was black, people would use the black one because they'd blend in a little bit better in dark corners, or the tan one if they're on some sort of desert map. You know, that's really how we work as human beings, and that's how things unfold. So it's taken me a long time to realize this, but in every single shooter, it boils down from five to two, maybe even one gun that's the most viable to use. Maybe it doesn't have the best damage output, but it's just more versatile and it's more uh, accurate and easy to use. Maybe it has a slightly faster draw time than other guns. It doesn't matter. Even in games that I consider to be balanced, there is a handful of guns that will rule the roost, even in a balanced situation in a conventional game like Call of Duty, Battlefield, or Halo. It's really not the fault of the developers. It's almost the fault of our human nature to gravitate to the thing that works the best, the thing that sings to us the most. And maybe you don't like the most powerful gun in a shooter. Maybe you don't like the way it looks, sounds, feels. Maybe when you first used it you had a really bad game and now you just have a negative pretense with it and you like a different gun. And that's cool too, we do that as well. It might sound like I'm generalizing, but honestly, in any of my shooters I could point this out to you if I wanted to make this video like 20 minutes long. Even in Modern Warfare 2 and 3, which have very fast TTK metas with very low recoil guns, the ACRs in both of those games ruled the roost for good reason. I'm not saying there's nothing you can do about this, and I think the best way to balance guns is to make sure each one is useful in a different type of situation. And to do that, you just have to make sure you don't have any guns that are useful in all situations. So no, you're not going to get true balance by making every gun incredibly powerful. Again, even in an entirely one-shot kill meta, you want the lower recoil. If every gun has the same stats, you'd want different iron sights. If they all have the same sights, you want the smaller gun that takes up the least amount of screen space. They all look the same, except for camos. You want the gun that has the camo that blends in the most. It's always going to come down to one or two things. One last example here. Rainbow Six has a one-shot headshot meta. Yet, some guns are better than others, or are at least considered better than others. You're thinking, well why? Just put the sight on someone's head and get the kill. It's a one-shot headshot meta. But not every gun's created equally. Not every gun is as good at getting a one-shot headshot. And not everybody's perfect enough to always land their headshots. Therefore, even in the stricter meta of Rainbow Six Siege, you have guns that excel in certain situations, and guns that do not excel in certain situations and you have operators like Ash that are chosen primarily just for her weapon and speed. Could be anybody, right? Could be any three speed operator with a pistol, because it's just one shot headshots, but no. So I'm sorry, you're not going to get a perfectly balanced game, and stop telling people to just make everything overpowered like Modern Warfare 2. Wrong. You're, you're wrong. Even in fast TTK, low recoil, versatile shooters like the Modern Warfare games, you're still gonna have guns that rise to the top. I'm sorry, you just are. If you stay to this point in the video, then I know you actually care about what I think and you're not just here to shit on me, so I will make one point. When you do make a lot of the guns kill very quickly and very accurately, you do improve the amount of variety used in your game. That way, even if there is a couple of weapons that rule the meta, you won't feel bad not using them when you're playing public matches and, you know, stuff that isn't competitive. You know, you're playing just normal public matches and casual matches. Yeah, you can use that stuff because it's not garbage. And that I think that is a better way to balance your guns. Either make everything very, very, very versatile and viable, or make sure every gun suits a role and there isn't a gun that suits every role. So those are good ways to balance your game. But it does boggle my mind that some people, for some reason, think that that is a fix to the issue. It, it really isn't, because again, you might not feel as bad in those types of games where everything's really powerful, 
for using whatever gun you want to use, but there is still a better way to be playing the game. I should say a more competitively viable or optimal way to be playing the game. And if that's the issue you're trying to avoid, good goddamn luck avoiding it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you when I see ya. Goodbye.